Welcome to the lecture on the course introduction to R software. You may recall that in the earlier lecture, we started a discussion on the topic that how to find and search a particular expression or a character inside a string. And for that, we have uh, discussed the two functions sub and g sub. The objective of these two functions was to find something from an expression and then to replace it by something what we want. Now, there is another aspect that suppose we only want to search for an expression that I want that where this type of expression is occurring in the string. That means in simple words, we are only interested in matching, matching of an expression in the string. So, how to do it? That is the first objective of this lecture and after that we will uh, discuss two more simple function. So, now we start this lecture. So, we have seen that uh, R has got several functions which can match and replace a particular expression inside any string. And uh, for that we have used the two functions here sub and g sub. So, sub and g sub have two steps to work. First step match, second step replace. Whereas, there are some function which do only the matching and these type of situations are pretty common whenever you are trying to deal with any database. Suppose, I want to know whether this expression is occurring where inside the entire document or say entire file or say entire data set. Usually, we have done such searches as say by using the command control find or say control F. So, now we are going to uh, discuss a command that is used only for search. Search means please try to find the match of the letter or character or an expression in the given expression in which I want. Okay. So, for that we have actually several commands, one is here grep and then another is here gripple and so on, but uh, just to give you a flavor of such things, we are discussing here only one function that is grep and I understand that if you need more, you can just uh, read yourself whenever you will need it in the future. So, the objective of graph function is very simple. It is used for searching the matches. Searching the matches means what? I have got an expression and I want to see where it is occurring in the file or in the given data set. So, this will only find and it will say these are the places where this match is occurring. Right. So, the meaning of GREP grep is that globally search regular expression and print it. So, it will only search, but only search is not sufficient for us. We also need to be informed. So, for that it will print the outcome. That is the simple use of this grep function. The syntax of a grep function is GREP and inside the arguments you have to write down the pattern which pattern? The pattern which is to be searched or that is to be searched. The next question is the R would like to know, yes I will search for you, but from where? So, for that we will see this is here the say a statement or x vector where the search needs to be done. So, the idea is very simple. This function grep will search for the matches which are given inside this pattern and 
this will try to search in the each element of the character vector x. Now we have two options. When it is trying to search and match, then it needs to inform us that where the match is occurring. We have two options. Either this can tell us the expressions or the strings where this match is occurring and inform us the entire word where the match is occurring. Our second option is that it can only tell us the position of the word where the match is occurring. Now with this graph function, we have two options. We want to search the required pattern and we want the output in terms of number or in terms of expression. Based on that, we have an option to use the option of say using true and false and based on that I can get a required outcome. So why not to take some examples and try to understand what I am trying to say. So now first I am going to take an example where I will be using the true option. So I write my syntax like grep and inside the arguments I would write here the pattern which is to be searched and then where to be searched this is here in x where to be searched it is here and suppose I want my outcome in terms of expression that it should not give me the number the address in terms of location in terms of number but it should give me in terms of expression. So for that I will use here another option which is value is equal to true. This value can have two options. This can be here true or this can be here false. So I will try to show you the example of both true and false and you may also recall this true and false they are the logical values and they are the reserved words. So in case if you use here value equal to true, then this is going to return a character vector that is containing the selected element of x. What does this mean? Now take an example and try to understand. Suppose I try to create a vector here by using the C command, combine command and I have here three strings. First string is here, so number one second string is here exercises and third string is here number 3. First, so first string is saying R course, second string is saying exercises and third string is saying include examples of R language. So essentially I had a sentence R course exercises include example of R language. So I have broken this sentence into three strings and which I have numbered here as say 1, 2 and 3. And suppose I want to know that where the expression ex is occurring in this say this vector which I have denoted by the name str that is a sort of a string I will say. So now if you try to look over here this pattern which is given inside the double quotes where this is occurring. Is it occurring here? No. Is it occurring here? Yes, this is occurring here. After this you can see here, no, it is not occurring here. It is not occurring here, nowhere ex. Now it is occurring here, say so ex in the examples. And after that it is not occurring here, nowhere. Now I am using here the pattern ex and I am requesting r to please search this pattern ex in the vector str which is given here and my value is equal to here true means I can use capital T or I can use capital T or UE both, both are acceptable and the answer comes out to be like this you can see here. So that is trying to say that ex is appearing in the word exercises 
or the string exercises and ex is also appearing in say another string which include examples of R language. So, as you can see here this is happening here and here. So, ex is being masked and then printed, but you can see here that this is giving us the outcome in which it is trying to report the strings, reports the strings where match occurs. Now, suppose I want to have the output in terms of the numbers only, what do you mean by number? So, let us try to take uh, this statement by using here false and try to understand what I am trying to say. So, now I try to use the same example, but the syntax is now changed a little bit here. In this grep pattern x there is no change, but I try to change only here this place that instead of true I have here false. So, the rule is this when I am using here the option value equal to false, then it returns an integer vector of the indices of the elements of x that yielded a batch. What do you really understand by this thing? So, try to take the same example and try to use this command and see what happens. So, here I am using the same vector say str in which my sentence r course exercises include examples of r language is broken into three strings number one, number two and here this is here number three entire is number three. So, now when I use here the same command there is a grep ex inside the double quotes that means please find the pattern E x in the vector S T R which is given over here and my value here is false. So, I try to give here an capital F or say, ca uh, say capital F A L S E both are acceptable and you get here the outcome here as a 2 and 3. What does this mean? 2 means that E x is appearing in the string number here 2 this 2 and this here this 3 3 means here that this is occurring here in this address here 3. You can see here that E x is appearing in number 2, string number 2 here and string number 3 here. So, now you can see the difference between the two that one is giving the outcome in terms of entire say this word or say string and another is giving the outcome in terms of the address in the form of an integer. Okay. Right. But important thing, the default value option here is false that if you do not give here anything then the grep function will choose value is equal to false as default. So, that is your choice what you want to get as an outcome. So, now let us try to see some more example, but before that uh, let us try to execute this thing and try to see do we get this thing or not. So, first let me try to take this create this string. So, I try to create this string over here. So, you can see here this is my here string and it is giving me here th three numbers, but anyway I want to make here a search where I want to search that where this grep is occurring. So, you can see here that this is trying to say this is here E x, this is occurring here in E x and here E x. So, you can see here this outcome is coming here as say in the form of two strings. And similarly, in case if you try to give here this option here is false, then the same command comes over here as say 2 and 3. This 2 and 3, for example, this 2, this corresponding to this 2 and this 3 is corresponding to this 3 that you have to keep in mind and the same outcome I have uh, given here that you can see. Okay. So, now the same outcome I have given in this slide and we come back toward this slide. So, now let us try to take some more example to understand the use of grep function. So, let me try to take here two separate vectors 
say x I am trying to say here r cos 2407 2017 and I try to take here another vector here y and I try to create a string number of participants colon 25. Now suppose I try to combine these two vectors together by the command c. So, you can see here as soon as I combine them this becomes here like this 1 and here this is here the second string. And now I am saying here grep that means Mr. R please try to search for the pattern O U R say hour where in C X Y where C X Y has been obtained here earlier. As soon as you do here enter this will give here the number 1. So, you can see here there are here 2 addresses 1 number and 2 number and that will also be clear to you when I try to uh, show it in the R console. But before that you have to understand what is really happening. You can see here this hour this is matching where here so in the word course there are three letter words O U R and then it is occurring nowhere else you can see it yourself. So, that is why this is saying that this is occurring at say address number 1. So, now let us try to see what happens if I try to take another uh, choice of letters. So, I try to take the same example, but now I am looking for uh, say here n u m num, where in this vector c x y and the answer comes out to be here 2. What does this mean? You can see here this is my number 1 and this is my here number 2. So, you can see here num is occurring here in the word number and it is giving me here 2 and here is the say screenshot of this thing, but let us try to do it ourselves and try to see what do we obtain here. So, first let me try to create here these two vectors say x and then here y. And now I try to combine them with C X Y. I can see here that there are here two things joined together and that is why there are two addresses here 1 and here 2. And now when I am trying to go for this here search and match for the value O U R string you can see here this is coming out to be here say here 1 and similarly when I try to do it here say here num you can see here that is occurring here at 2 num is occurring in number 2 and our is occurring here in number 1. And similarly now if I try to use here another function just for the sake of illustration if I try to see here value is equal to here true then what do we get here this thing. And in case if I try to use here values equal to here false you get here the same thing. So, you can see here that this outcome is based on the use of the value option right. And similarly if you want to go for here num you can see here value is equal to here false will give you the same outcome that you obtained earlier here. But in case if you try to give here value is equal to here true you get the first sentence the entire string is here. So, that is the use of this grep command. So, let us now come back to our slides and we move see here further. So, that is the outcome. So, now I will stop with this grep function and would like to take up another function which has got some utility when you are trying to do some data searching or data analysis or something like this. 
There is one function which is called as eval. Eval is the short form of evaluate. This means what? This eval function evaluates an R expression in a specified environment. What does this mean? So, to understand it, let me take here some examples and we try to see what it is really doing. That will give you a better idea than I explain you the theory part. For example, I write here EVAL 2 hat 2 hat 3. This means what? This is here 2 raised power of here 2 and raised power of here 3. So, what it is trying to do here? This will be solved in the first step here as a for this part and this will come out to be here 8. 2 cube is 8. And then once I try to multiply it by here 2 into 2 into 2 8 times this will come out to be here 256 that is 256. What is really doing? Do not you think that this function is working just like a calculator? So, when I am writing the syntax like EVAL and inside the argument if I am writing any mathematical expression, then it is evaluating the expression. But then the next question comes, why should I use this? What is the difference between then the calculator and this eval function? So, let me take here another example. Suppose if I write here E V A L 6 plus 8, what do you expect? The answer will come out to be 14, the addition of 6 plus 8 is 14. But now, suppose in some programming at some places, I want this 6 plus 8 to be printed just like 6 plus 8. That means, I am not requesting R to do any mathematical calculations on the expression 6 plus 8. So, if I want to print a mathematical expression just as such, then I can write down here the EVAL 6 plus 8, but within the double quotes and then I will get an outcome here just like 6 plus 8. What are the places where this can be used? Have you ever seen a mathematics book where they try to type say in the first line they will write 6 plus 8 and in the next line they will write 14. So, that means in the first line they just want to print 6 plus 8 as 6 plus 8 and in the second line they want the result of 6 plus 8. So, similarly you can encounter several places when you are trying to analyze the data where you would like to do so. In those situations this function is going to be useful. And here you can see here the outcome. I will try to show you on the R console also, but this is the screenshot. When you are writing here EVAL 6 plus 8, you are getting an answer here 14, but when you are writing 6 plus 8 inside the inverted commas, you are getting it like this. So, let us try to do it on the R console and try to see it here. Suppose I will write here EVAL, suppose I want to write here 2 plus 3 plus here 4. You can see here the answer will come out to be 9, but in case if I try to enclose it inside the double quotes, the answer will come out to be like this. So, that is the advantage of here EVEL function. So, whenever you want to print the mathematical expressions as such, then use the mathematical expression inside the double quotes. So, they are going to be treated just like a string they will not be treated like a mathematical function. Let me take here another example. Suppose I want to print something like this 6 plus 8 is 14. So, here we have some numbers and we have some here characters and but I need the entire expression to be printed as such. So, I will try to give it double quotes and then I will try to use here this function evaluate and it will print us like this and you can see here this is the screenshot. So, you can try it yourself. 
Now, after this small and simple use of this eval function, now let me try to introduce one more function. This function is called as here parse parse. The advantage and utility of parse function is that this is used to change the string into an expression. So obviously when you are trying to deal with data analysis where you have some numbers, where, where you have got some strings, you have got some characters and if you want to manipulate with the data set and if you want to change any string into an expression, you can use this function. The syntax here is something like parse and inside the bracket, uh, inside the argument you have to give the details. So instead of going through with the details on the parse function, why not to take here some example and, and we try to understand what this function is really doing. So you have seen that here in this function here eval. In case if you try to write 6 plus 8 inside the double quotes, it is printing 6 plus 8 as such. And in case if you want to find out the class of this string, you can see here this will come out to be here as a character. But now I try to use here the parse function and I say here text text is equal to this. Then you can see here what is happening. The answer is coming out to be here 14. So what is really happening? Here in this step, this 6 plus 8 was written inside the double quotes and it was taken as a character. Character means no mathematical manipulations were used. So as soon as I write down here parse and say inside the, what is my here text? Text here is 6 plus 8 inside the double quotes. As soon as this parse function enters inside this bracket, this will delete these two inverted commas and this function will become a expression. And then as soon as you try to use here the function eval, now here this will be eval 6 plus 8 and the answer comes out to be here 14. And now in case if you try to see what is the class of this expression, this will come out to be here as a expression. So you can see here this character is changed to here expression. So why not to do it over the R console and try to see what is really happening. So you can see here, first I try to write down the same thing, see here this will give us like this and if I try to remove here the 6 plus 8, this will give us here 14 and if I try to see and find out here the class of here 6 plus 8. You can see here this comes out to be character, but in case if I try to find out here the class of see here 6 plus 8, you can see here this is numeric. So now what I try to do here that I try to use this here the function here eval and you can see here the answer comes out to be here again. So this function, please try to observe where I am highlighting this expression and this expression they are giving us the same outcome. right? And in case if you try to find out the class of this, you can see here this is expression now. It is no more a character. So on the character we have implemented the function parse. So that has changed its class and now I can do the mathematical manipulations because now it has become a, a numeric. So and now here this is the screenshot of the same thing that you can see and you can try 
and now I would request all of you to please use these functions which we have discussed in different situations, try to take different examples and try to familiarize yourself with these functions. And in the next lecture, we will try to come up with some new topic. Till then, goodbye.